if you shoot film like me, you've probably been tempted at least once to try your hand at panoramic photography, whether it be through digitally stitching images together afterwards, or buying a specialized camera back, or buying a specialized camera. Of course, these options, especially the backs and the cameras themselves, can be quite expensive. The backs can cost around $600 and upward. These backs tend to be pretty simple too, in the mechanisms themselves, which makes it all the less unsavory. And then you have the cameras around these backs you gotta buy, whether it be a four x five or a larger format camera, and the lenses, and typically you need to buy an extra wide lens so you can actually get a decent field of view with your images. And then the specialized cameras, such as the Hasselblad X-Pan for a 35 millimeter. I don't wanna know how much that costs. It's not within my budget, that's for sure. And then you have like the Shen Hao 6x17. I think that's a camera that Nick Carver uses, who rightfully so, pretty much dominates the whole format of 6x17. His photos and his videos are just so dang awesome. So with this high price in mind, of course, I really didn't see myself shooting panoramics in the future. I thought, oh, that'd be awesome to try one day, but I'm not gonna drop the money on it. And one day my luck really came in and I was able to find a Cambo 6x12 back for ungodly low price locally. So I figured, all right, well, here I am thrust into the panoramic format. I'm gonna give it a try. There's a lot of places that are a little more flat, environmentally speaking, that really yield themselves the decent images in my area. One of them would be Bidwell Park. I had a little inspiration to go into Bidwell Park and take these images. I don't know if anyone else does this, but I do enjoy looking at historical digital archives in my area, looking at older images of where I live and just some of the landscapes that people may have taken 120 years ago. Of course, the landscapes tend to change over the course of 120 years. But in the case of this park, not much has really changed, which is awesome. So I was able to find some older images in a, my local university's digital archive. They display a rather stormy winter's day with some fresh runoff going into the big Chico Creek there, storming through Iron Canyon. And it really matches the conditions of the day when I went for a hike with a Cambo 6x12 back. It had been raining for about three straight weeks prior. Things were pretty well saturated. The rivers were ripping, the waterfalls were ripping. Just a beautiful day to go for a hike and take photos. The first photo opportunity that I came across was this field where you had a couple oak trees on the horizon, although they weren't so symmetric as I would have liked. I was eager to get my first photo. As anyone knows, getting that first photo is just the toughest part sometimes. Like I said earlier, the composition is a little skewed to the left. There's a little too much going on, I think, but maybe I'll come back in the fog when the trees have a little more separation from said fog. After taking a few images from the rim of the canyon, I felt like I should hike down into the canyon itself and take some photos along the river, which I would assume was ripping just like the photos that were previously shown from the archives.
after finishing my roll of Ilford XP2 Super 400, I figured I would switch over to Gold 200. I reckon not so many people have shot Gold 200 in medium format in panoramic format yet since it's fairly new still, so I figured I'd give that a go. Eventually towards the end of the day I got a little tired honestly and I didn't film the very end of my last few shots but as you can see it's pretty much a similar composition to earlier and overall I'm not crazy about the photos but it has been fun to be able to experiment and learn. So hope you guys like my video shooting with the 6x12 Cambo back. The images themselves uh, you know they're I think it was lackluster overall results. I think the black and whites I don't know, I'm just not 100% satisfied with them. Although I do think I'm kind of new to the format, so there's a lot of room for improvement, a lot of time to improve. As for the shots on Gold 200, it is a little bit of a colorless landscape still. I mean, California is always gonna have more color in the summer and in the winter, but right now it's just a little too gray, especially the trees. The grass is green, but the trees are gray. Nonetheless, I think I will go back into the park during greener conditions and definitely take a lot more photos. So when shooting and using the Cambo 6x12 back, first you're gonna do before you load is check and see that it is at, on the film counter here, a notch above the S. When you do that, it'll spin freely without the film counter moving at all. If the film counter is not at this spot, or even if it's at directly at S, what you're going to do is hold down on this button right here and rotate clockwise until it spins all the way into this zone after shot number 12. After that, it's going to stay above the S and that's what you want. Next thing you do is you open her up. So then you're going to lift up these tabs to load it. You're going to insert it with the backing paper, the black part of the backing paper facing downward. What you'll do now is you'll remove this center piece right here. You're going to put the film underneath this first spool, push it a little bit through. And you're gonna push this until you see these arrows align with these center squares. All right, they are now aligned. You're gonna put this empty spool take up spool in the correct spot right here pretty easy you're gonna lower these two tabs that'll keep the film tight to the spool close her up boom to wind it onto the first frame you see this you rotate it and it clicks into s position and from there all you got to do is rotate it clockwise until you reach shot number one you take your first shot boom Press the button down, click it down, and you're on to the next shot. Until you reach your sixth shot, that is assuming you're shooting 120. If you're shooting 220, it's a slightly different loading procedure and you go to shot number 12. So congratulations, you shot a whole roll. You're at shot number six, done shot number six. Now you just press down, hold down on this button until you feel the spool loosen up and then you're completely done with your roll. Pretty simple, open her up and you're done.